Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer, I'm a software engineer at Google, and today I'll be talking about how my team is working to ground LLMs in real-world statistical data using data commons. Large language models have revolutionized the way we interact with information. However, they still struggle with hallucinations. We've all seen those responses where the LLM very confidently tells us something incorrect or misleading, or when it does get its information correct, it doesn't always tell us where it got it from. All of this is exacerbated by the fact that data is scattered everywhere. Different APIs, formats, schemas, and that's why we believe data commons can help with that. The team I work on at Google, Data Commons, is on a mission to organize all of the world's public data and make it universally accessible and useful. It is a completely open source project that has two innovations, a base knowledge graph in schema.org format and a natural language interface, which I'll talk about why this is key later on. Our knowledge graph has over 250 billion data points from over 120 trusted organizations like the UN, WHO, census bureaus, and the list continues to grow. I would like to quickly highlight some of our wonderful partners like the Statistics Division at UNDESA, TechSoup and One.org, academic institutions like Stanford and ASU. They have all prepared data in an AI-ready way so that our research could flourish. As I mentioned earlier, Data Commons has a natural language interface. We realized we could leverage this as the API that LLMs use for getting data. This way, we don't need to teach the LLM any specific APIs or data schemas. We just need to teach the LLM to know when to ask for data, and then it can ask it in natural language. We explored two different approaches for doing this. One, which we called retrieval interleave generation, where we trained the model to know when to ask for data commons data. And retrieval augmented generation, where we appended data commons data along with the user query and passed that to the LLM. First, let's look at retrieval interleave generation. In this approach, we fine-tuned the model to recognize when it needs to replace an existing number in its response with more accurate information from data commons. Take, for example, a user query like, has the use of renewables increased in the world? The base, unfine-tuned Gemma answer will give some statistics in the answer, like use of renewables was at 6% in 2000, 12% currently. In our fine-tuned model, we return the same response, but along with each statistic, we also add an annotation to call data commons to get data about that fact. We go retrieve the data from data commons, and then replace the original numbers in the answer with the new ones that we got from data commons, along with the original source that data came from. So the number 12% became 18%, and 6% became 16%. And both of these numbers came from the global SDG database. In our evaluations of retrieval interleave generation, we looked at the statistical claims in the responses where we had a value from the LLM and a value from data commons. The original LLM answers were correct 17% of the time, while the data commons value was accurate 60% of the time. These are still very early results, but very promising, and we are continuing to improve upon this. Next, let's, next, let's look at retrieval augmented generation. In this approach, we retrieve relevant information from data commons before having the LLM generate an answer. This way, the LLM has a factual foundation for its response. Using the same, user query, using the same query from earlier, has the use of renewables increased in the world, we pass the question to our fine-tuned model, which then gives a list of queries that data commons' natural language interface can understand. We go fetch the data in the form of data tables from data commons and feed that data along with the original user query to an LLM and ask it to respond to the query using the fetch data. The LLM can choose to use numbers from the tables and if it does, it will also return the table along with the response. One awesome example we saw was what progress has Pakistan made against health goals? First, our fine-tuned model came up with a list of great questions asking about access of clean water, life expectancy, infant mortality, and then we got the data from Data Commons and fed it to an LLM, which was able to cite numbers from the table like um, 
Safe drinking water was about 50% in 2022. Hepatitis B immunization coverage was about 85% in 2022. And not only was the LLM able to cite facts from the tables we gave it, it was also able to reason on top of this. It knew whether the numbers were increasing or decreasing over the years, and it knew whether an increase was a good thing or a bad thing, because life expectancy increasing is positive, but any increases in undernourishment would be concerning. And the LLM also knew what it didn't know. It knew where in the data we gave it there were data gaps. In our evaluations of retrieval augmented generation, we looked at the accuracy of statistical claims in the responses from retrieval augmented generation responses compared to Gemini 1.5 Pro responses to the same queries. We found that retrieval augmented generation responded with more statistics and the statistics were accurate 99% of the time compared to only 39% of the time with Gemini 1.5 Pro. These are still early results, but very exciting, and, can, and our performance can be improved by increasing our data coverage. We don't currently have very much data on Japan or Korea because of language barriers, but we are an open source team, and we welcome you to help us build upon our knowledge graph. All of our fine-tuned models that I talked about are on Hugging Face and Kaggle under Data Gemma, and we also have collab notebooks of retrieval interleave generation and retrieval augmented generation. We have a blog post detailing all our research and links to all of our resources. I hope you go check it out, try it out, and help us improve on our research. Thank you.